In this video, we're going to continue on with this compliance and monitoring dashboard by building out the bottom part of this dashboard where we're going to be able to display the athletes and then um, readiness values along the right hand side here. All this is controlled by a master filter where you can select the test that you want as well as set upper and lower limits for this test to display the colors in the chart. This is going to be really powerful if you are tracking any sort of monitoring or wellness data with your athletes. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back and as a reminder of how far we've gotten this far, we have basically created our entire data set and then started to create this dashboard that we can view our metrics on. Up top, we have a compliance dashboard that basically searches for um, whether or not an athlete has an entry on that date. If it does, it lights up green. If they do not have a, um, an entry on that date, it lights up red. And then it is also calculating the percentage of entries that we have. Um, on the bottom here, we're going to build a wellness report or a wellness dashboard where we can actually look at what the scores are for the variables on that date. So to get started here, we have this filter bar that we've built on the side. What I'm going to do is just copy one of these um, filters that we've already created and hit Control C and then Control V and paste it underneath. And I'm going to call this um, the metric that we want to basically look at. So I'll type in here select metric. And all this is is one column followed by um, two columns that have been merged. And then I just have a drop down menu inside of it. We're going to change the drop down menu around, however, though. So in the drop down menu, I will just go to data and then data validation. And I'm going to go to my control panel where we have filtered out all of our tests. And I'll just select this C column. And I want to go from C2 all the way down. So basically starting here and then going all the way down. That's going to allow me to reference any of the tests that I might want to look at. So I will hit OK and then save. And now we should be able to pull up whatever metric that we want. I like to look at readiness personally because I feel that gives me a good overall score. So from there, this is no longer called a compliance report. It's actually going to be called a readiness report. So how we're going to change that is if I go into where I've typed in compliance report and all I'm going to do is turn this into a formula, I'm going to hit equals. And then this cell where we're selecting what we want to look at. And then the and symbol, um, a quotation, space, quotation, and then another and symbol. And I'll base it, and then I'll put quotations around report. And when I hit enter, now you'll see that it says readiness report. But if I change it to sleep or stress or whatever, it's automatically going to update to reflect um, basically the scores that I have selected. Now, for the dates, we could easily just copy the formula from up here, but because they're all gonna be the same, and what we'll do is if I hit equals, and then basically this cell here, and hit enter, and then I should be able to drag this all the way across, and it should automatically update, and all of the same filters and formulas should still work from up top. Then from there, what I can do is just copy all of these dates, control C, and I'm going to um, paste, but I'll just paste the formatting so that everything matches back again, okay? So all we've done there is just up here, we have a sort and transpose function to pull out all of our dates. There's no sense in writing that again. I might as well just re-reference them so that everything stays the same. And then the same thing up here, the formula that we're using to pull out all of our names is just um, a unique formula. But what I'm first going to do is just control C and I'm just going to paste the formatting in here so that um, it all looks kind of the same. And then I'll use that same unique formula. So I'll hit equals unique and I'm going to go to my data column and select everything and close that off and hit enter. And there are all of my kind of athlete values. So then um, some of the other things that we might want to do is I'm going to leave a spot up here for entering in the upper, lower, and mid bounds for our um, test. So I'm going to type in stop, caution, and go. And I just like to bold these, and I'm going to center them. 
And then what I'll do is just give these a color coding here so that I know which is which. And then we'll make the go green. So then finally, what we actually need to do is pull in our readiness um, values. So what we're gonna use for this is a filter function. So I might not have um, a range created yet. So let me just go to my data, named ranges. Oh, and I actually don't have my named ranges selected. So let's, let's create those now. So the first one I wanna do is in my data, I'm going to select basically A to G, and I'm gonna to go to format, and sorry, data, named range, and I just wanna go from A2 all the way to G, and I'm gonna call this data, and hit done. So basically whenever I type in data, it's going to refer to all of the all of that values, okay? And then the next one is gonna be headers. So type in headers, and for headers, what I want is this first row. So data all the way one, one, and I'll hit enter and hit done. So those are my two kind of references. So if I go back to my cells here, let's type out this filter formula now. So we'll say equals filter, open this up, index, open, and we want to reference all of our data. And then from there, comma, it's going to ask us what row. We don't want to select a row. We want to select a column. And we want to match for our column. So we'll type in match, open this up. And we want to match for the value that we've selected. In this case, it's in C15. And I know that that's never going to move. So I'm going to lock that in. And then comma, we want to look for it in our headers. And to avoid any issues of things being similar, we're gonna type in false and close this off. And we'll close off that whole formula. Now, when do we wanna return this? Well, we wanna return it when the, um, the name column is equal to our name. So we're gonna go find the name column, which is A2 all the way to A. And I'm going to F4 this because I know it's never going to change. And when that is equal to I go back to our cell here when it's equal to our name which is stored in F31. Now I know that the column is never going to change but the row on this might so I will lock in just the column by typing in a dollar sign and we also want to do it when the date is equal to the date up above. So we'll go back to our data and we'll take the date. We know this is never going to change and we want B2 all the way down. And we, when that is equal to our date up here, which is I29. Now in this case, the row is not gonna change, but the column will. So I will lock in just the row and I should be able to close this off and it will give me my value. Now, if I've done this right, I can drag this formula all the way through and hopefully it gives us all of our values, but you can see that it's giving us some errors. So let's look and find out where this error is. So what's changed here? So we're looking for the same date. We haven't locked in one of our cells. So the first one that we didn't lock in was up here. We didn't lock in our B2. So if I lock that in with a dollar sign, hit enter. Now I'm gonna drag that back through and see what happens. So now we can see that all of our um, athletes who have values get a value and then the ones that don't get an error and the ones that um, don't have a value get an error as well. So what I want to do is actually um, create a little if error formula here. And what we'll do is we'll type if error. And then at the end of this, we'll go comma double quotations and hit enter. And let's drag this through now and see what happens. And you can see now that that has cleared up a lot of our data. Okay, so that's just a quick way that we can clean up all of our data. And what I'm gonna do now is make it match up top. So what I'll do is I'm going to go thick outside border, um, thicker to make it match. And then for our inside border, we'll go thin, but we'll go white. So that takes away all of our borders. And why don't we just 
uh, basically bold all of these cells and then center them so that they're easy to see. So that's a quick way to pull out all of our variables depending on what we're looking for. And then in the next video, what we're gonna do is color code all of these based on the numbers that we select, as well as create a little trend report on the side so we can see how that athlete is trending over time. So I hope this video helps you out. If it does, please like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out. And if you could share this with somebody that you think might find it useful, that helps me grow as well. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.